for me man i do actually have a couple um all right the first one man I kind of hinted to it. I want JPJ out there at least 50% of these defensive snaps, if not starting. I feel like he's more than capable. I feel like he's more than shown that he is reliable, he's dependable, and his effort is there. He's smart as heck. And I love the fact that no moment is too big. Man, when you talk about playing against the Odell Beckham, we talk about it as, you know, us in the media or even for fans. It's like, oh, it's Odell, it's Odell. But you imagine when you actually lined up against Odell as a rookie. Yeah, sometimes that reputation like, oh, does matter, right? Yeah, even if he still don't got it like that, it's, it still is like you never bro, know. That's could, that's could he pull it out for Odell, one play against me? Like, bro, but on multiple occasions, I'm watching how JPJ is not just matching up with it; he's pressing it. When you say I'm gonna press you, you like, bro, what's up? I'm at your neck here. And to be fundamentally sound every single time. That's my other part. And like I said, it wasn't just this week. Because if it was just this week, it's a small sample size. I'm going to naturally have questions. I'm going to talk about that with Broderick. But as a whole for JPJ, I can look on multiple occasions and see when they've given him more how he's been able to produce. How he hasn't had the negativity. And I'm like, man, I want that more of. And like we talked about even what our regular corner situation. The next part is with Broderick. So this is the thing with Broderick, man. I thought he played really good on uh, Sunday. Like I said, dropping a film session on him and to highlight what he was doing, pass blocking and run game. The athleticism jumps off the screen. That's the difference between him and Dan Moore. Dan Moore, way more fundamentally sound as a floor right now, but nowhere near the athletic ability that Broderick has. So when you're talking about me watching Broderick, even though he's facing a Jadavion Clowney, Jadavion Clowney is super athletic, long rusher, not elite, not great, but a good player. I'm watching how Broderick is able to irritate him by jump setting him. Yeah. You're not jump setting that dude unless you really believe you could dance with him because that's turning the fight on right now. Right. I'm watching him do that. I'm watching him vertical set. You're not going to beat him around the corner. I'm watching when they put 50 over there and try to bull rush him. He's anchoring on that. Then I see Jadavion Clowney try to get cute and say, I'm going to go wide alignment to trick you to make you think I'm coming out here. And try to take you inside, and man, he low key pancaked him. Now, granted, he tripped a little bit, but I'm gonna call it a pancake. Who you think's more washed, Clowney or Odell? I hate to say it. I think well, Odell, because I was gonna say the way you're talking about Clowney, it's, it's Odell, like bro. Hey, he, he still got something. Yeah, like Clowney, Clowney won some reps, bro. Yeah, like as a whole, Broderick, I thought won the day, but Clowney had some moments. It just didn't hurt us. Kenny, I know on the one, Kenny was able to see it get away. We were good. As a whole, though, Broderick, I thought, number one, is a pass protector. Watching him versus some of the twisting stunts. That's another thing that young offensive linemen struggle with. Tackle, DN wrapping around, stuff like that. They'll get too locked in one way or the other, and they just never see it. For him, I'm watching him. I'm like, bro, you're anchoring down on this. Man, you even know how to hammer it down when you get in this, uh, the penetrator, and now you're going to bump the guard off, get the guard on the looper. It's like, bro, this is high-end stuff, and you're doing it naturally. So I love all of that. Like I said, watching him in the run game was the big difference between him and Dan Moore. I just thought that for him, he wins the grass better. But that's what we saw even with him at Georgia. That's also why he was a first-rounder. Yeah, Dan's a fourth-rounder. To me, I think Dan is a dope player, but that's the difference. Also, I'm not going to act like Jadavion Clowney is on the same level as the guys that Dan Moore faced early in the season, right? Nick Bosa, right. Miles Garrett, Max. Matt, uh, Max Crosby. Heck, even Will Anderson, I think, is a better rusher than Clowney. But at the same time, I'm saying, Roger, you don't have to face these guys now. You know why? Miles Garrett, the only guy that's on that roster or the only guy that's on that list that you're going to have to see later on. Now, we've talked about the who's who's. That's your top five or arguably your, you can make a case, top five, top three rushes in the league. Yeah. We know who the big dog is. You don't never got to see him. And we ain't got the Cowboys on the roster either or Cowboys on the schedule. So it's like, even in the moments where I'm like, they okay. They might be frauds. They low key. <laughs> they in denial too if you listen to some of them talk. But it's like, when I think of Broderick, I'm like, okay. If those were the murderers that were out there, you don't have to see them. By the time you see Miles Garrett, bro, you're a different player. You done got multiple starts under your belt. But for me, seeing him at least versus a, Dav- a Jadavion Clowney, it's like, okay, I know he's not as productive as those guys. But talent-wise, he's in the same conversation as them dudes. And that's what, for me, where I'm like, yeah, I'm good with Broderick going forward. I hate the fact Dan had to get the get got on the injury. But at the same time, some of this stuff is predetermined. 
And I'm like, man, it was only a matter of time for they was going to make the switch anyways because they drafted him too high. It's the, if anything, this is the cleaner natural. way to do it. It is. It makes it a little bit less about the feelings, even though internally we all know, bro, it won't you, Dan. They was going to make this move regardless. But now it's like, yo, you injured, man. Just take your time, bro. Just take your time. You good. No rush. Just take your time. You all right. Young boy out there now. We don't want to mess up the, the rotation. Remember they said that with Banner. Remember when Banner was on, right? All right, I'm coming, I'm coming back, Kevin. And he was like, all right, well, now they kind of are set. Chooks and started 10 games or how many games. Yeah. Like, hey, man, we ain't switching it now. This I be, man. But those were my two men right there, honestly, though, man. JPJ, make him the guy. Or at least 50% of the snaps. And then for Broderick, even though, like I said, is nothing that Dan Moore, to me, has done as a negative. It's just his ceiling is not going to be higher than what Broderick can give me. And pass rush or pass protection wise, they're close enough. And that's what I needed to see. It's like, all right, that's enough for right now. Now, it's not saying this is permanent because, yeah, if he go out here and get cooked next or uh, after the bye, it's a different convo. But I don't think that's going to happen based on what we were seeing in this game right here, man. Maybe Broderick's just big time gamer. He, he definitely with way more effort. In like nastiness in this game than any other preseason games I watched, bro. That was another thing, and that was also what we kind of said. I was like, "Yo, is it you're tired, lazy, or is it you're the first round and you out here in the fourth quarter of a preseason game?" It looked more like that because out here on you know versus the Ravens, I'm like, "All right, you really out here? You fighting to the end of the whistle? You? I'm seeing you push a cat down, and you still like, yo, if you get up, was good. Like that wasn't what was showing in the preseason, bro. In the preseason, it was like, all right." Uh, I blocked you long enough. That's enough. I'm going to chill now. <laughs> yeah, you got to think some of the games that he experienced down in Georgia. Yeah. Steelers-Ravens is more along that type of line. And yeah, I didn't think he looked yeah. bad in the Texans game. So, yeah, I think it's just regular season now. He's going to be good to go. Yeah. He'll be locked in. He'll be, he'll be a dog out there. Basically, the whole scouting report on him this whole time was mm-hmm. – He's going to fight for the team. Like, yeah. you know, he'll, he'll give effort. He's got all that athleticism and stuff, too. But he's definitely got that dog in him. Mm-hmm. You're right. It was lacking a little bit in preseason. But now, for whatever reason, maybe he's just a, a primetime gamer. Like, yeah. regular season games, when they matter, I'm going to show up. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying that's the best way to go about things. But, hey, as long as you're performing, it's whatever. No, nah, without a doubt. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take you playing like this in the regular season over the preseason. If that's what we're going to get, I'm like, yeah, that's... As we're seeing from the offense as a whole. Yeah. It's cool we got those five touchdowns in five series in the preseason, but those right. didn't count. 